We've got a brand new Disney ride challenge today, going to all four parks, and this one's based on math. Hello, ma'am, fam. I am headed to all four parks today with another Disney ride challenge. We've done oldest and newest attractions in each park. We've done best and worst. We've done overrated and underrated. And today we are doing most popular and least popular ride in each park, which means eight attractions total across the four Walt Disney World parks. Now, how am I determining the most popular and least popular attraction? Did I pull our Mammoth Club community like I did in the past two? No, we didn't, friends, because this challenge is based on math. And no, it's not a genie challenge, but this is gonna use data, it's gonna use graphs, it's gonna use numbers, and I think it's pretty interesting. And hopefully you will too, especially if you're a theme park nerd like I am. <laughs> so I did a quick Google search to see if anybody was keeping track of ride wait times across the Disney parks, and I came across a site called qtimes.com. They are tracking using official theme park apps, not only the waits at Walt Disney World, but Disneyland, Universal, Universal Hollywood, Six Flags, basically all major theme parks and amusement parks have some kind of app that shares the wait times for the guests in park. And this website is taking that data and making charts and statistics and informational graphs about it. And that's what we're using today. And no, this isn't sponsored by QTimes.com. I'd literally never heard of them until I was doing research for this video. And they're not the only website that does things like this, but it was the only one I could find that easily had available the average weight per park by ride per year which sounds really confusing, but basically I wanted to know at each of the four Walt Disney World parks, which ride had the highest average wait time and which ride had the lowest average wait time. And those eight attractions are what I built my list on. And we're clearly starting here at Animal Kingdom. So let's get to it. You probably already knew that we're headed to Pandora, the world of Avatar. The question is, which attraction am I riding? If you thought the most popular ride in Disney Sandable Kingdom was Navi River Journey, I am so sorry, you are incorrect. It's Avatar Flight of Passage, which is probably not coming as a huge shock to most people. In fact, it's probably more surprising that Navi River Journey is the second most popular attraction in Animal Kingdom. Again, based on wait times. And I've talked about in different videos why that wait time is so long, but we're doing this based on data today. In the year of James Cameron, 2023, the average wait time for Avatar Flight of Passage is 97 minutes. Second, it's a huge cut down, over 30 minutes, Navi River Journey at 66 minutes. I'm surprised the gap's that big because normally they're pretty on par with each other, but hey, that does mean we're gonna go uh, fly and not see the Shaman of Song now for the challenge. Flight of Passage is the 3D simulator that puts you on the back of a banshee and you fly over the valley of Moara. It has a 44 inch height requirement and it is a fancy ride on Genie Plus, which means if you'd like to skip the clearly, usually very long line, you're gonna have to pay specifically for this attraction. I'm going through the lightning lane today. It was $14 to skip the line here at Flight of Passage. A lot of people ask me if this queue is worth going into as there are some queues in Walt Disney World that are really, really cool and you miss a lot of it in the lightning lane. I do think this queue is really cool. And if you go through the lightning lane, you skip the bioluminescent forest, you skip the entire lab with the floating Navi, you skip a lot of the caves and some other RDA facilities. That said, again, an average of over 90 minutes. Yeah. If you don't want to wait in a long line and you don't want to pay for lightning lane, I would recommend rope dropping Flight of Passage as a resort guest or wait until the end of the night. And while the line will probably still be an hour, at least you're doing it inside after the park close and you're not wasting any park time. Come on. Perfect. The way you're going to do this is by being matched to something called an avatar. I'm Dr. Jackie Ogden from the Pandora Conservation Initiative. of passage it really is a beautiful attraction and i can see why it's the most popular attraction here it's one of the newest attractions here it's got the coolest tech in this park it's stunningly beautiful so yeah i get why people love flight of passage i'm also not surprised that it has the longest wait on average because beyond being incredibly popular and some people's favorite attraction in all of walt disney world or at least a lot of people's like top three it's very slow to load and unload because of the bikes the bikes are a very unusual seat. 
They're a little bit tricky to get into and do the safety checks. Some people get in the bikes and realize this isn't gonna work for me, or sometimes kids get scared once they get strapped in the bikes, which delays moving the ride forward. So yeah, it's not shocking that this has the longest line on average. Same thing goes for Navi River Journey. Although I bet, and share your thoughts down in the comments, if I were to poll people on those popular, instead of using statistics, I don't think Navi River Journey would be number two. I think it would be like Everest, maybe safaris. Moving our way to the least popular attraction in Animal Kingdom, headed into Dino Land USA. Which makes me a little sad because I love this land, but I'm also not even remotely surprised by this. According to the map, the least popular attraction in Animal Kingdom, Triceratops Spin. Triceratops Spin. Triceratops Pin. Triceratops Spin. How do you say it? Because it's spelled like Triceratops spin because it's like a double meaning because like triceratops like the dinosaur but also spin because you're going in a circle but then also a third layer like spinning like a top it's deep for sure but triceratops spin is a dumbo clone here in dino land usa there's no height requirement it is quite literally dumbo with dinosaurs you're going to spin on the attraction it's aimed at little ones and it basically never has a line now i will say the data cannot factor in things like shows. It can only scrub what's on the tip board. And the tip board doesn't tell you that you might have to wait 30 minutes for Festival of the Lion King. It just tells you when the next show is. So I guess theoretically something like Feathered Friends in Flight might be less popular than Triceratops Spin. But honestly, I don't think it would matter even if you could factor in shows because the average wait for Triceratops Spin, eight. Just eight simple little minutes. And most of the time, it's less than that. It's just waiting for one spin of dinosaurs, 90 seconds, to go in front of you. Now, it is important to know that whilst the dinosaur can sit for the front controls up and down, the back controls the tilt forward and backward. So if you've got two children, both of whom are going to want to control up and down, ask for two dinosaurs. And most likely, they'll be able to accommodate because it's the least popular ride here. Spin. Triceratops spin check. You know, I don't like saying attractions are bad, except for Cali River Rapids in my right. Anyway, I think most attractions serve a purpose, and the purpose of attractions like Triceratops spin are to be for kids. You need attractions that aren't going to get very long lines, like Triceratops spin, that are aimed at littles, so they can go on that with someone while other people in the party ride attractions like Dinosaur or Expedition Everest, neither of which are very far from here. So I'm not surprised it's the least popular. It's not super innovative tech. It has definitely got a clear audience unlike other things, but it's a cute spinner attraction and it will always hold a soft spot in my heart since I worked there as a college program student a million years ago. And with that very thrilling conclusion, we have wrapped up our first park, checked off our first two attractions. So we are headed to the next one. from our second park, a beautifully fall and festive Magic Kingdom. One of my favorite details during Halloween in the Magic Kingdom is on Main Street, the pumpkins match whatever store they're on. So like there's an ice cream cone over the ice cream parlor, there's baseball things and hot dogs over Casey's Corner. I just love this time of year. And for the second park in a row, the number one and number two most popular attractions are in the same land. Any guesses? If you guess Tomorrowland, I'm very sorry, good guess, but it is in fact Fantasyland. And I do think it's a little surprising that it's not Tomorrowland because that is home to the newest attraction in all of Walt Disney World, Tron Light Cycle Run. But the data can't track how popular Tron Light Cycle Run is because it's on a virtual queue. It's either purchase a fancy ride or join a virtual queue. There's no standby line to put up in the app. So there's no way to judge how popular it is in this fashion. I do think Tron is incredibly popular. I actually still don't think it beats our number one, which we're headed to right now, but because of virtual queues, both here at Magic Kingdom for Tron and over at Epcot for Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, those can't be factored into the data, just so you know. But we're just having fun. 
And with Tron out of the picture, you probably already guessed that the most popular on average based on wait times is Seven Doors Mine Train. In the year of Winnie the Pooh 2023, Seven Doors Mine Train averages an 82 minute wait. Number two award goes to Peter Pan's flight with 69. Nice. Seven Doors Mine Train right now has an 80 minute wait, which is, as you can see, pretty average. It is also a fancy ride, so if you want to skip the line here, you do have to pay an additional cost. It was $11 today to get a Lightning Lane for Seven Doors Mine Train. Now, this is a roller coaster slash dark ride that puts you into the Snow White and the Seven Dwarves story. You are going to jump into a mine car and head into the mine with the dwarves. And what I love about this attraction, I talk about it all the time, is how cool the cars are because they not only move forward like a roller coaster, but they swing back and forth like a mine car. And I think it is super duper fun. It has a 35 inch height requirement, so it's a little bit of a bump up from something like the Barnstormer. I actually recently did a video where I rode every roller coaster in Disney World and ranked them against each other based on fun and thrill. So if you've got some little ones or you're worried about how intense roller coasters can be, check that one out. But I think this attraction's adorable and I'm not at all surprised that it is the number one spot at the Magic Kingdom. <laughs> Doors mine train complete. Also, it kind of started spitting raining like while I was on the ride. I didn't know because <laughs> it wasn't raining and I was in the queue inside and then I was like out on the track getting hit with raindrops and now it's basically stopped. Classic Florida, but it was like a surprise attack from the rain. Now, I do really enjoy Seven Doors Mine Train. I don't ride it that often because of the 80 plus minute wait. But every time I do, I'm delighted and I find myself smiling. But is Mine Train truly the most popular ride in the park if you were just counting numbers? I don't know. I think Haunted Mansion or Pirates of the Caribbean would probably pull more popular. That said, Seven Doors Mine Train, I think a must do if you're coming to Magic Kingdom and you don't come often or it's your first visit. If you don't want to pay for the fancy ride, it is open for early park entry for Disney World Resort guests. It is open for extended hours for Disney Deluxe and DVC guests. So I'd recommend one of those times. It also, like most attractions, drops a little bit in the evening, especially around fireworks time. Bopping into Adventureland for our least popular attraction. And wouldn't you know it, it was a four-way tie between the Carousel of Progress in Tomorrowland, the Country Bear Jamboree in Frontierland, Tom Sawyer Island in Frontierland, and this beauty, the Swiss Family Treehouse here in Adventureland. All of them averaged a five minute wait, which is Disney app language for there's no wait. And while my favorite of those four is easily Carousel of Progress, it's a perfect 20 minutes relaxing in the air conditioning steeped in Disney history. It's been a while since I've climbed up those 116 steps to the top of the treehouse. Why not? Carousel of Progress and Country Bear Jamboree, you have to wait for the show to be at the beginning before you can watch it. So you may end up waiting for a few minutes. And Tom Sawyer Island, you have to wait on a raft driven by a cast member before you can go over to Tom Sawyer Island. Only Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse is there truly no wait because you just walk and it's a self-guided tour. You don't have to wait on anything. The Swiss Family Treehouse is themed after the 1960 live action Disney film, The Swiss Family Robinson, about a family that gets shipwrecked and then forms their life on an island. This is an opening day attraction here at the Magic Kingdom. And unlike the one in Disneyland, which has gone through some different changes in theming, this one's stayed the same. Also, I think it's fun that the tree right here, the big tree that they have built their house into, it's called the Disney Odendron. It's a special magical kind of tree. Here we've got the living room with the musical instrument. Is that a piano? I guess it's a piano or like a key piano. It's a piano, right? Oh no, it's an organ. It's an organ. And it's playing the little ditty Swiss Capoca. I will say the best part of this attraction are definitely the views. Here's the master bedroom for mom and dad. My question is, how short are they? I do not think I would fit on that bed as a single person, let alone two people. Here's the kids room, Fritz, Ernst and Francis. And I, have to notice there's only two beds. So does that mean only two of them ever get to sleep at the same time? Is one of them always on lookout duty? 
That seems like a bummer. Down we go. Also, I don't know what it is, but I walk around these parks all the time. I work out pretty regularly. And yet, walking through this attraction kicks my butt. Like, I will feel these stairs later. And the finale, the ground floor is the kitchen. And look at all these delicious fruits they have. I guess if you were trapped in the jungle, you would have a lot of fresh fruit. I'm seeing pineapple, banana, avocado. Man, they are living good. Although, I don't know that you get cheese in the jungle, so I couldn't do it. And there you have it, the Swiss Family Treehouse. Is this a must do? No. Are any of these that I just listed any of those four? Probably not. I think the best of those four is Carousel of Progress, but like any of them, there's a very niche audience. And Swiss Family Treehouse, it's fun to do if you want your kids to burn off some energy. If you want to walk up to the top of that, if there's nothing else to do, but for the most part, I do think you can skip this one. Even though it's, it's cute, it's fun. It's something different if you haven't been here in a while. You should do it at least once. How, let's say that. Also, I am excited to see the newly refurbished one at Disneyland, it's in progress right now. At Disneyland, they refurbed it to be Tarzan's Treehouse for a while, and now they're bringing it back to be the Adventureland Treehouse, so it's gonna be an homage to the opening day version out there. So I'm excited to see that next time I go. Really? It's a historic attraction. But yeah, definitely not a must do. Before we head to park number three, stopping for a little snack break, and there are no tables around here, so you know what that means. It's trash can table time, it's trash can table time. Magic Kingdom edition. The spring roll cart has a new spring roll. Well, it's been here for a few weeks, but I haven't had it yet. They still have the cheeseburger one and they added a cordon blue spring roll. So I got one of each, give them a roll. So the spring roll cart outside of Adventureland is very popular and they had the pastrami spring roll for a long time for the 50th, but they mixed it up and they added a cordon blue one. You get honey mustard for the cordon blue and you get the special burger sauce for the cheeseburger one. I didn't ask which one's which, but based on colors, I think this is cheeseburger and this is cordon bleu, which is like ham and cheese. So we're gonna try that one first. Mm. I guessed right. That was definitely the chicken cordon bleu. It's got chicken, ham, tastes like Swiss cheese in there. It's a little dry. So I'm gonna dip it into the honey mustard that I was provided. It's pretty cheesy that I appreciate, but it's pretty one note flavor wise. A little saltiness from the ham. It's fine. Definitely not my favorite one. That title belongs to the cheeseburger. Especially when you dip it in that special sauce, which is burger sauce. It's like Thousand Island with pickles, a little kick. Oh, that's the stuff right there. It's everything you love in a cheeseburger. Ground beef, cheese, onions, pickles. They are pre-made, so you can't ask for anything out of it, but they're delicious. And I've said it a million times, and I'm gonna say it once more. The quick service food at this park is the weakest of all four. So for me, this is a great shareable snack if you wanna each have one or a light lunch. And with that, two attractions and a little sneaky snack. Goodbye, Mickey Pumpkins. We're headed out of the Magic Kingdom and onward to Epcot. Hello from park number three. We have made it to the experimental prototype community of tomorrow, Epcot. And we're gonna switch things up while we're at Epcot. We're gonna head to the least popular attraction first, then the most popular attraction, because it makes sense, my path that I need to take today. Now, unlike at Magic Kingdom, where I said that the virtual queue attraction, Tron, probably wouldn't have changed the results, I think Seven Doors Mine Train and probably Peter Pan's Flight will ultimately stand the test of time and be more popular than Tron. Probably close call, but vote, vote what you think down in the comments, that'd be help, very helpful. Here at Epcot, I do think the virtual queue attraction would take the number one spot if it didn't have a virtual queue. That's Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, and I, I absolutely think that's the most popular ride here at Epcot, and for good reason. It's an incredible coaster with the Guardians characters. There's the fun rewritability of not knowing which song you're gonna get and trying to collect them all like Pokemon. But for this video's purpose, we will be riding a different attraction as our most popular, but let it be known if we are basing this off of a hypothesis versus empirical data, I do think Guardians would take the number one spot. What's gonna take the bottom spot though? Headed to the Imagination Pavilion. So you know what that means. That's right, Figment fans, I've got news for you. Your dragon, he's not last. It's actually the Disney and Pixar Short Film Festival. 
The Disney and Pixar Short Film Festival was the number one least popular ride, if you want to say it like that. It has an average wait of five minutes, edging out the Three Caballeros Grand Fiesta Tour at eight minutes. Now, here's the thing. That's kind of a lie, but it actually is a 16 minute wait. But the wait time for the Disney and Pixar Short Film Festival is 20 minutes counting down because that's how long the show is. So as soon as the show starts, they reset it to 20 minutes and then it counts down. So while I don't think you're ever gonna have to wait for more than one show, if you come in now, you have to wait the whole 16 minutes till the next show. So I do think probably Grand Fiesta Tour takes it, but in the wait time app, the data usually says five. The Disney and Pixar Short Film Festival is a 3D or I should say 4D show because you have 3D glasses, but then you also have moving seats. Uh, this is actually the Captain EO Theater, may it rest in pieces. And you are gonna watch three Disney and Pixar shorts. It's cute, it's in air conditioning, it's sitting down. I love Get a Horse, which is an original Mickey cartoon that they have uh, added new technology and color to, but it still uses Walt Disney's voice for Mickey Mouse, which makes me feel feelings. I think this is pretty underrated. And if you need 20 minutes sitting down in the air conditioning or to take a nap, I will not judge you. I, I've definitely never slept in here. I, that couldn't have been me. Um, I think it's a cute spot, but I don't think this is a must do for most people at Epcot. Wanna know one of my favorite things at Epcot? I love the upside down waterfall. It's so cool. Anyway, Pixar and Disney, Disney and Pixar <laughs> short film festival check. Again, not a must do. Great for beating the heat or if you get caught in a rainstorm, but there's a lot of other places to sit back and luxuriate in Epcot. And now we're off to the most popular ride here. Any guesses? If you knew we were going to France, well job everyone. Because yes, according to the numbers, the most popular attraction in Epcot is Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. In the year of our figment 2023, the average wait time so far for Remy's Ratatouille Adventure has been 71 minutes, followed very closely by Frozen Ever After, which has an average wait time this year so far of 69. Remy's Ratatouille Adventure is a 3D attraction, no height requirement, and it shrinks you down to the size of a rat to run through the kitchen with Remy and Emil. It is super adorable. I really like this attraction and it pretty much always has a long line. Right now it's 60 minutes, that's an hour. It's not a fancy ride though. This is a regular Genie Plus. So if you purchase Genie Plus, this is a great one to book first right at 7 a.m. I recently did a whole series on Genie Plus. Can each park get the best tactics and things on how to use it? So recommend that if you're planning to purchase it. This one is a pretty cute queue. However, you get to see most of it in both standby and lightning lane. The cutest part is when you get to go on the roofs and see the giant Gusto sign, and you get to see that either side. Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. I think it's cute. I actually really enjoy that attraction. It doesn't make me nauseous like a lot of simulators do. I think it's because it's a mix of practical sets and I love the little cars. I think they are the cutest ride vehicles ever. Now, do I think it's worth a 70 minute line? I don't know that much is worth a 70 minute line if I'm being honest with you. It's just hard to justify standing in a long line when park time is so precious and limited to begin with. I feel like if you're able to, and you figure out how to master it, Genie Plus is a great way to get on the attraction without waiting too long. Although it can get backed up. It was pretty backed up tonight. I also think if you are a resort guest, Remy's is a great one to rope drop. It's also usually much lower in the evening and it is part of Epcot After Hours, which is the specialty ticket extended event, which is a lot of fun and 
is a great way to get on a few things in the evening time without using Genie Plus. It's still raining. It's a little harder now. Hoping the Skyliner doesn't stop because that's how I'm getting to park number four. Goodbye to Epcot. Hello to Hollywood. Hooray for Hollywood. We made it to park number four and I've got good news and I've got bad news. The good news is our most popular attraction is not closed for weather, which I was very afraid it would be. The bad news is I'm a dumb donkey, a dumb donkey right now. You see, when I was scheduling my lightning lanes, I moved out my Hollywood Studios one to be the very end of the evening because the attraction we're going to is made infinitely better at nighttime. So I made it for the last hour of the park being open. And you know what, friends? I made a rookie mistake because we all make mistakes. I didn't look when the other attractions closed. And it turns out the theater shows, not just the live action ones, but the movies as well, are now closing at eight. Whoops. So I will tell you what happens in our lowest weight, our least popular attraction. And then we'll go read the most popular one. And hopefully, You'll learn from my mistake that if you want to see some of these theater shows, including the movies, you got to get here earlier in the day. But let's be honest, if you're here at the last hour, you're watching Fantasmic, you're riding thrill rides, you're probably not headed to Lightning McQueen Racing Academy, which, spoiler alert, was not the lowest one, but it did close at eight. The lowest wait time, the least popular attractions here at Hollywood Studios, a two-way tie between the Mickey Shorts Theater Presents the Mickey and Minnie cartoon vacation fun, and I'm sorry to say it, Muppet Vision 3D. I was kind of excited about going to see Muppet Vision 3D, but alas, I will now just perform some highlights for you. Hi, it's me, Mickey Mouse. Welcome to my park. Ratch Matt, they're tourists. What do they know? <laughs> Stopping in the middle is distinctly unpatriotic. What kind of act is that? An act of mercy. <laughs> we invited renowned scientists from all over the world to come to work at Muppet Labs. Sadly, none of them could make it. It's called a salute to all nations, but mostly America. Does it feel like you just watched Muppet Vision 3D? Maybe, a little bit. Anyway, let's talk more about it while we walk to our most popular. Sometimes I do things in these videos and I think this is either gonna be really niche content or really embarrassing. So we'll see where that lands. Anyway, it's not surprising that Muppet Vision 3D and Vacation Fun both have the lowest average wait time, much like the Pixar Shorts 3D theater that we saw earlier. It's usually just waiting until the next show. So most likely the wait time will be posted at 10 minutes, but you're really just waiting until the theater empties out and you can go in. I would argue that Muppet Vision 3D is more popular than Vacation Fun. At least I'd like to hope that because I love the Muppets so much. And what I like about Muppet Vision 3D, even if you have to wait the whole 10 minutes for the show in front of you, the pre-show is really funny. It's full of really great Easter eggs and sight gags and footage of the Muppets being the Muppets. Vacation Fun, on the other hand, well, Goofy's not wearing pants for most of it, so it's not my personal favorite. But if I were a betting lady, I would bet Vacation Fun is truly the least popular. But statistically, the two were tied. And speaking of being tied statistically, would you believe it that our most popular attraction was tied? I actually bet that's not that surprising. And some of you might be surprised that I'm headed to Toy Story Land and not Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. But that's because in the year of Buzz Lightyear 2023, the average wait time at both Slinky Dog Dash and Rise of the Resistance, 90 minutes. This is the first time we've had a tie on the top, friends. And while I'm happy to accept a tie for the bottom spots between a couple different theater shows, I am not happy to accept a tie at the top spot. And I refuse to believe that these two attractions truly have the same average wait time. I mean, one of them is the most technologically advanced attraction Disney's ever built. And the other one 
is a cute coaster, but just a coaster. So I decided to dig deeper and I found more data, this time at thrilldata.com. Thrilldata.com is another website that tracks the wait times at theme parks and amusement parks, but they didn't have yearly information for Walt Disney World, but they did have monthly information for the Walt Disney World parks. So to break that 90 minute average tie between Rise of the Resistance and Slinky Dog Dash, I decided to see which one has had a longer average wait this month, August of 2023. And I really thought I was going to the galaxy far, far away. So color me surprised when I learned that so far, Slinky Dog Dash's average wait has been 106 minutes this month, and Rise of the Resistances has only been 79. So here I am, wrapping the day, tapping in at Slinky Dog Dash. Now, don't get me wrong, I love Slinky Dog Dash. It's a super cute family attraction, a little more bark than other coasters like Seven Doors Mine Train. I'd say not quite as intense as Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. It's got a 38 inch high requirement. And again, I think it's adorable, especially at night. How cute is this land at night? I am a huge Toy Story fan and I love coming into this land at night because I just think it's adorable and so, so well themed. But wow, am I surprised. Part of me wonders is if this data doesn't count when the attractions close because it wouldn't be populating any kind of number that these websites are pulling from. And Rise of Resistance closes a lot for technical difficulties. That said, Slinky Dog Dash right now, last 10 minutes of the park being open, 60 minute wait, just dropped down from 75 when I was walking up. Rise of the Resistance, 30 minutes. Thank you. If you're as surprised as I am, let me know down in the comments, but we're gonna end tonight with Slinky Dog Dash and I, I am excited because I do love it at nighttime. I'm just surprised. Maybe it's also because Slinky Dog Dash is part of Genie Plus and Rise of the Resistance is a fancy ride. So some people don't wanna purchase the extra lightning lane for Rise, but if they're already booking Genie Plus, they're booking it for Slinky Dog. It's truly a mystery, but numbers don't lie. <laughs> Jesse? Slinky Dog Dash really is such a cute attraction and it is bonkers fun at night. It is so beautiful in this land. And then when you're up at the top, you can see Tower of Terror lit up, you see Galaxy's Edge lit up. Do I actually think it's the most popular ride in this park? No, if it's not Rise of the Resistance, then it's probably Tower of Terror, but the numbers said it's Slinky Dog. So I wrote it and I loved it. Now, I will say Slinky Dog Dash. Howdy, I'm Jesse and that dinosaur toy up there, that's Rex. How's it going, Rex? Did I ever tell you I'm afraid of heights? That's okay, Rex. No? Well, let me tell you. I'm afraid of heights. That's okay, Rex. You're facing your fears and we're all proud of you. Keep doing your thing, buddy. If you do want to ride Slinky Dog Dash and you're not purchasing Genie Plus or you don't get a lightning lane for this one, End of the Night is a great time to ride it because it is beautiful in here at night and it's a lot cooler in this land that literally has no shade. Well, friends, that is a wrap on our latest Park Hopper Challenge. We did the most popular and least popular attraction, or tried to, in each of the four theme parks according to the science. Do you agree with the numbers? Do you think they're correct? Or do you think there's some nuance? Definitely let me know down at the bottoms. What's your favorite ride in every park? Do you have a suggestion for another comparative video like this? Let us know all of that down below. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe, join us on Discord. Until next time, friends, I'm Molly, and it has been so magical. Good night.